Today, in this video, I just wanna share my personal process for how I approach planning my video game projects. Typically, people will start a game project and get maybe a couple weeks or a month into it and then lose motivation and not really know what to do next, and suddenly you have shiny object syndrome and you wanna to switch to a different kind of project and then the cycle just repeats in that way. When that happens to me, personally, it's usually because I didn't take the time to plan enough. So if any of that feels familiar at all, I hope something in this video will help you out, maybe something you could try on your next project. I've been planning a big project myself and that's what kinda of got me thinking about this stuff. So this is the exact process I use on both long games that go onto Steam and shorter demos, things that I make tutorial series about. Hope it helps you out. There are three main areas we're going to cover here. The first is ideation, which is just getting all of your ideas into a place that you can look at and constantly reference and change. The second major area is asset generation. This is really just the process of creating or gathering anything that you need to build out the scenes of the game, like the graphics or important sound effects. And the third major area is technical design, which is basically planning out your strategy for writing all the code at a high level. How is everything going to work technically? How are you going to package this game? How are you going to deploy it? So you figure all that stuff out ahead of time. When you have good strategy and systems for all of these concepts, you're in a good spot to just write the code. You don't necessarily have to do these things in order. It's not a step one, step two, step three kind of thing. Just in the early phases of making a game, we want to make sure we have a good grasp on all of these things. Right off the top, I do want to clarify, there's absolutely nothing wrong with just jumping into code and starting to make prototypes. That's honestly probably the best way to go about starting a new game idea. This video is about when you have a base of an idea and an approach and you really want to forecast out everything that needs to happen for you to actually complete and ship the project. We're going to talk a lot about planning here, but for more info on how I approach coding the actual games, I have a whole course website for that that's also linked below. If you're into this stuff, liking the video and subscribing to the channel really helps me out. Let's get into it. So to help manage all three of those pillars that I've been talking about here, I like to create something called a design document. And I should specify real quick, this is different than the official kind of design document you'd use to pitch to a publisher. That's more of a formal document, and this is more casual. This is a casual internal planning tool just for you and your team. Rather than talking over more slides and that kind of thing, I thought I'd just like share my screen and show you exactly kind of what I do. So here I'm at figma.com. It's a new Figma document. I've been using Figma for this process lately. It's a design tool. Everything that I show you here, you're going to be able to do for free. If you just go to figma.com, create an account, it's a really great design tool. But you don't have to use Figma. You could use whatever you want. A good friend of mine even does this in PowerPoint because that's like his tool of choice. Photoshop, Sketch, Miro, Illustrator, any tool that you want to use, that'll be fine. Now the cool thing about Figma here is that you can sort of infinitely draw boxes. So I'll just create a new box here, frame one, and I'll, maybe I'll call it something like, you know, inspiration. Now in here, I can just add text if I want, like say we're gonna design like, you know, a platformer game similar to Mega Man. It's a project I've been kind of starting to work on. So we'll use that as an example. I'll rename it like Mega Man style plat former game. Now this first section here is all about inspiration or idea generation. And so at this point, I'm just trying to fill this document with things that inspire me, like uh, maybe things from other games that I like. If I want to mix and match elements from games that I really like and I want to include those elements in this game, but with my own twist, well, I can just kind of like make a stew of inspiration here. So maybe I'll drag in some images, you know, from other Mega Man games. Here's an image from Super Meat Boy. It's a different platformer. What I really like here is the multi-layered background. It's just like a really nice aesthetic. It's a little bit different than what we see in here. So I'll just move these to the artboard. Now here I've used screenshots of other games, but you could totally use anything you want here. Maybe a capture of a movie, like if there's a scene in a movie that really inspires you, or something from a TV show or whatever. It doesn't really matter what it is. It's just some kind of piece of inspiration. Now I want to come in here and just capture the bits that I like about each thing. So this is like cool multi background. And it's worth noting this document, uh, it doesn't look very pretty because I'm just kind of like jotting ideas down here. I like that, you know, um, bosses in the style of Mega Man where you're kind of locked in this chamber with the boss. It's just one-on-one. -on -one. I want to capture that feeling. And then down here, I like it in the X games, you could charge up the shot. I think that's really cool. So I'm just capturing things that I like. Now, of course, here I'd spend like hours doing this and, and fill this with way more examples than just the three. Realistically, this is something that lives on through the project. So throughout the next weeks and months, I'll be like filling these documents with all kinds of random stuff. 
And as we go here, I'll show you some examples of real documents that I've made just to show you how they kind of grow over time. So as you think of things, go ahead, just drop your ideas in here. Uh, at some point, we kind of get into the actual planning part. So if this is a Mega Man style game, I know I'm gonna need like eight stages. So maybe I make, you know, a couple new artboards. Stage one, two, three. Now I have eight total. And maybe I start filling in the themes of the stages. So this is like the water stage. Make this a little bit bigger. Fire stage. You know, in a zoo. Getting a little bit wackier here rather than the cliche stuff. And I just continue filling it in from here. We also might need an intro stage before we get to the stage select. So here's like a bucket for ideas there. Maybe this, you know, it takes place on a highway. And then after we're done with that, we have like a classic stage select screen. And maybe I want the classic kind of layout. It's rough, but at a high level, it's like I'm kind of fleshing out different areas of the game I know I'll need. From here, I can go into each area and just add more detail. These might be ideas I have on day one, or these might be things that I like, you know, wake up some morning and I'm like, oh man, you know what the water stage needs? It definitely needs like a, an angry octopus. So little bits of detail here. You can see I'm already getting crammed in space because you know, this, that's just like one little idea, but if we're making a whole stage, we're probably gonna have a lot of different ideas and other even images and art that we want associated just to that stage. And so for that, I'll come into Figma and create a new page. Maybe we do a dedicated page for the water stage. And then maybe this first page where we've added everything else so far is like the, you know, home page. We'll see better examples of this as we go. But now in the water stage, I can come in here and then maybe even start to plan the rooms out. Like if this is a platformer, let's change up the color here just to make it, you know, blue and watery. There you go. Maybe we start here and then we have like a long horizontal room. And then we get into like a vertical kind of room. And, you know, since this is the style of game and kind of plan out the platformer, like character starts over here and kind of works this way, we might want to fill in ideas for each room here. It's all very abstract right now. It's just colored boxes. So the next thing I like to do is actually sketch ideas on paper, like things that maybe are a little bit more compelling, a little bit more realistic. Then I'll take a photo of those sketches with my phone and then drop them into Figma here. So let's see that. And voila, I've just dragged some photos from my phone onto the screen here, and then I can zoom in. And these are just sketches from like a real life, you know, piece of paper. Got some basic level layouts here, maybe with some like trap ideas and different platforms. You can see that there's kind of an aesthetic of a kind of background for this environment. Uh, certain ideas here. This is not really a water level, but it's something else I was working on. But you know, you get the point. You're just kind of like sketching ideas out here and then keeping them in this one digital place. And so right now we've got some loose ideas for this stage. They're very sketchy, very fluid. I could also keep pulling in images that inspire me. Like, you know, here we use these screenshots from these games. If there was a specific water level I was inspired by in a different game, I could pull screenshots or like footage of that level into the water stage specific page. And as we go, we'll like keep making them a fire stage and then have this nice home to put all your fire stage ideas right here. Everything's fair game. We're just adding ideas to this document. Uh, I might even make a page that's like characters. And then here I'd have little just individual artboards where I could upload different sketches of the different characters here. In long story driven games, you might even have like story snippets associated to each character. And we can manage that all right here. Another thing that's cool about Figma is that it has a real time capability built into it. So you can send this link to someone else and then they can be in here dragging ideas as well. Uh, that's how we worked on our game jam game, Bad Ref. I've made a video about that before on this channel, but just for a second, I'm gonna go ahead and snap over to that board. Okay, now here we are in the GMTK 2023. This is a game that Matt, Glenn, and I worked on over the summer last year. And it was a game for a game jam where you have like 48 hours to get together and make a game. And so rather than just like jump right into the code or into the design or whatever, we spent most of the first day, like the first uh, 12 hours, I think, just working in this document. And it looks kind of messy, but I just want to walk you through some of the things that came out of that. We did end up with a soccer idea. So we have some uh, different like soccer images that were inspiring to us, like different variations of soccer games. We have little gameplay notes here, like you got to be able to follow along in the field, be able to trip people. This is a game about being a referee that's trying to like corrupt the outcome of the match. 
we have all these different ideas of like the controls, like mapping out how many buttons we're going to need to use. We really wanted the game to be called Red Card, actually, where you get to like throw a player out and throw red cards. We didn't actually get that far into the game project, so uh, we had to change the name at the last minute. And the whole point here is that we've just filled this document with ideas. Once we had a good idea of what the game should be, then we moved on to the next stage, which was actually creating assets that we'd use, like the real assets. So back in our platformer water stage example, let's maybe explore what that looks like a little bit. Now on the side recently, I've been working on a new tile set project, uh, you know, for a platformer game that I'm kind of thinking about. And here's what I've got so far, just an example. This might be a good fit for our water world. There's like blue backgrounds and you know, it's like maybe not final final, but it's definitely getting there. It's definitely getting closer to what the real game could look like. I've been using Tiled for this and A-Sprite to do the art. Uh, it's been a good process so far. I'm thinking about making a video about that too. So if you want to see that, just let me know in the comments, of course. So what I can do from here is actually export this image out of Tiled, even just as a placeholder, and put it into my design doc. While this asset's maybe not totally final, it's enough to go into the doc and serve as like a reference point. Okay, so I'll go zoom in a little bit on the water stage here, drag in that image, size it up. And now I've got a more realistic look at like what the first room in the map might look like. And so from here, I can keep iterating and fill out the rest of the rooms and eventually have a good layout of like what this level should be. Haven't touched any code yet. It's a balancing act on, you know, when to start developing versus when to keep planning out things like this. But the cool part is like once you get into actual development and your design doc is a little bit more filled out, you kind of have what you need to build. And so now to show you like a little bit more of a fleshed out document, or at least one that has a lot more realistic stuff in it, I want to show you Chibata's Revenge. Now, just for the record, Chibata's Revenge is a video series I made on my website, Co-op Mode, where we build this whole game from scratch. You know, this is the final game that's on itch, and it's got a little story to it. Just kind of zip through this stuff. It's this puzzle game where you can go around the world and like solve these little puzzles. We're in the early stages now, so it's going to be really easy. But as you go, if I go to like a later level here, uh, maybe like this one, see that the rooms are full of all kinds of different mechanics. There's like these pretzel guys and these clowns and these green things and these bits of fire. Now for figuring out all the checks and balances of all these different elements in the game, we had to do a lot of planning and that's where the design doc came in. So here's the Figma board of Chibata's Revenge. This is the exact file I used to plan out everything that went into that project. I start with a sketches page. You can see I've got like kind of sketches of the bread themed characters and like grid based movement. It's like really rough stuff from that same sketchbook. Uh, even an inspiration with like this real ch piece of ciabatta bread, grid based stuff. Uh, this game I used to play as a kid called Captain Novelin, which was about food or like angry food or something. Chips challenge, top down puzzle game. And then finally we get into like the real mechanics. And so here I matched every sketch with an actual asset. So as far as asset generation, you know, I had the sketches ready to go. I just had to go into a sprite and actually create all the art. And now for the record, here's the a sprite file for Chibata's Revenge. I basically start with this giant document and then start working on a sprite and just kind of keep varying it. Uh, little things like, you know, the green arrows. And it's just like a really rough sketch pad and a really flexible area for all this stuff to just sort of come together. And when I feel good about something, like this is, I think, close to the finished Chibata character, I just pop little captures. I'll just like capture him, copy him, and then put him into the document. And so again, you can see all that here, the different enemy types. And then as we go, we have like the different types of stages that'll be in here, different mechanics, like there's a level timer all the different puzzle elements. So we start with sketches, we have bags of flour, and then the different little floor tile types, see like ice and those arrows, water, fire, these little switchable bricks. As we had ideas for things, we would just put them in the document here, starting with a sketch, then getting into more like realistic graphic. And then of course, like a text description of what everything should do. And now this is kind of where the third pillar comes in, which is like planning out the code at a high level. You know, after doing a good bit of work on generating all these ideas and then having assets that are kind of ready to go along with the ideas, now we have an idea of like what kind of considerations need to go in our code. If we have these six different levels, we know that the game is going to need to be able to have a level loaded and then be able to swap out that level with a different level.
And so when I'm working on the game, even if, you know, all the levels aren't completed yet or planned or coded or whatever, it doesn't matter. I know I need to have a, a system in there that can take some level that's loaded and then swap it out with some other level. Kind of sounds obvious to say it that way, but just from looking at the different ideas here, you can get a feel for like the different types of considerations. To kind of hammer that home one last time, there's one more document I want to walk you through, and that's for a different RPG game I've been working on over the last year or two. So let's see that. Now, this is the design doc for Legacy Code Legends. Made a couple videos about this game, this upcoming project on my channel. It's been a while, but it's still in the works. Just like we've seen before on the front page, we've got just all different kinds of ideas on like, it, I want it to take place in a city. So I've got the Denver skyline here, maybe some pixel arty versions of mountains, your ability to change your main character and edit them however you want. The interesting part though, I think at least from talking about a big coding project perspective is going into this like battles page where here I've planned out every single type of attack that can happen. All the different characters and enemies are listed here. And these aren't final, of course, I just keep adding them as I have new ideas. Uh, someti sometimes things will start with a sketch like we talked about before. Other times I'll be working on art and find something I like and I'm like, oh, this has to be a character in the game. And so I'll just kind of like make an uncharacterized uh, spot for them in the document and then put them somewhere. And just in kind of looking at all this, I know that I'm going to have different coding perspectives. So here's like all the statuses and the RPG that can happen. Here's all the things that they do. We're always iterating and changing these. By planning all this out, it kind of helps me eliminate some assumptions in the code especially when you get into things like these complicated life cycle methods like, you know, last stand where a character's supposed to die, but, but they actually get upgraded back to one health after they take that final blow. If you hadn't coded for that or expected to code for that, that could be like a tricky thing to layer in later. So by knowing that up front, it can kind of save you time later. And as you can see, this is a really long game. We've got areas of the design doc that talk through all the different quests. These are all the different areas in the game over here with different sketches for every single part getting kind of close to some tile sets here and there, filling out the different areas. This is the one document that all of our ideas get funneled into. And so if you're used to the feeling of having like different text files all over the place with different snippets of ideas or different post-its all over your desk, it can help to really gather all those things and put them in one digital place, especially for projects that take a long time to make. The big takeaway here is that it's totally worth taking the time to plan out your game in a design document, whether it's before you start coding or in the early-ish phases of your project. If you maintain the design doc alongside with your code, your design doc will start to give you guardrails naturally. So if you're ever out of gas or out of inspiration in the code, you can pick out just one next clear thing to do from your design doc. If you are working on a game, you should join our Discord server. There's a really supportive community of people there also building games. People want to hear what you're working on, maybe bounce some ideas off people, whatever you need, join that server. Happy game making. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.